So next year, 12.1 is here, and this is a big deal. This probably might be one of the most important releases next year has done because it launches a singular important feature, which is on-demand ISR. That is in beta now. It is in unstable mode, but it's still available. It still works. I would say this is probably one of the most important updates next year has done in a long, long time. And all of these updates are actually something which I'll not even talk about in this video because this one in itself is so important. So let's discuss that. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So before actually discussing what exactly this does on a technical level, let's take a look at how this works through a demo. So they have deployed this one demo on Vercel, obviously. And what this is, is that you can see this page over here. If I go to my networks tab, this page over here, and if I switch to, let's say document, you can see I'm getting a status of 304. Now a status of 304 means not modified. That means what essentially the CDN is telling is that there is nothing to be fetched from the server. So the browser can use the cache, which it had, right? And it has a super fast response i mean 32 milliseconds it takes me 32 milliseconds 36 milliseconds to load this page which is just crazy fast right so that means Warcell is hitting me directly from cdn in bombay which is a city in india so Warcell has all these edge networks edge cdns available all over the world and they send this data to the users directly from those CDNs. And this is this is like crazy fast 30 milliseconds is nothing all right so what they have done is that this is a static file, right? Let's understand the first thing first. Uh, this HTML over here is probably sitting on that CDN as a static file, just ready to go. There is no computation happening when I request this file, nothing going on in the background, just a static HTML file delivered to my browser and then hydrated again. Okay, so the interesting thing is that this is kind of a mirror page of what happens when we create an issue on this Vercel repository, DROPS repository. So I'm going to go ahead and create a test comment. And I'm going to say you are being tested as a test, I don't know, like test example for a YouTube video, right? And I'm going to submit this issue. Now I submitted it just now, give it a refresh. And there you go. You can see that we got a status code of 200. This means that this document got a status code of 200 okay that means there was something new so we fetched it and now when i refresh it again we get 200 for the second refresh but after that we started getting 304 that means this is again cached right and it happened in the span of seconds right so the first request after i changed this you know after i added a new issue or a new comment in this case i got a status code of 200 that means the cache was invalidated and after that it reverted back to 304 this means that okay someone else also added the issue so that's why mine got pushed a little bit but you can see that after a while it starts showing you just 304 which is awesome right because this means again you are down to the 39 milliseconds so i'm gonna go ahead and open my test comment over here and i'm gonna see over here let's see if i refresh this again we get 200 doc for the first time and if i refresh this now we are getting 304 if i add another comment over here if i quickly go ahead and refresh this you can see it here i get the first comment over here with a much much higher time for the first render but the subsequent renders the time drops significantly because now i'm getting a hit from the cache from the cdn directly so what exactly is this black magic what is happening so you see Warcell used to support and nextjs used to support something known as incremental static regeneration with a revalidate parameter. Earlier, what it used to do is that it will give you an option that, okay, if you want to periodically regenerate a static page, for example, this page, you can tell us, you can say that you want to generate it in 30 seconds, maybe in 60 seconds, and Vercel Next.js would attempt to regenerate that page at most once every that duration which you specified. So you see that, let's say if you specified a on this page itself if you specified a revalidate parameter of 60 seconds it's going to regenerate that page at most once in every 60 seconds right so you would have to just keep on refreshing over here over and over again to actually render something meaningful but now with this on-demand incremental static regeneration you can programmatically regenerate stuff and the way they do this is they have probably hooked up a webhook on the you know on github side and uh, they listen for those events 
on one of their API functions. And once that webhook hits, Vercel or Next.js runs this code on their end, which is rest.unstable revalidate. You can see this is an API endpoint and unstable revalidate is just a way to revalidate a particular path. And that's it. You just specify a path you want to revalidate and it's just gonna push the cache and it's just gonna wait for the next build, next hit to come. So now this is amazing because you have now the power to invalidate cache for a single page or a path in a single command. And this change, as Vercel says, propagates on their global CDN within 300 milliseconds, which is crazy low amount compared to the fact that Vercel actually propagates this on a global CDN. Compare this to CloudFront or even Cloudflare, which take Cloudflare takes, you know, for their KV store at least, I think 60 seconds. They have this guarantee that they will propagate it within 60 seconds, but it probably might take 60 seconds for their KV store. Cloudfront is basically lazy as hell. So <laughs> Cloudfront takes, I think, anywhere between 10 minutes or something if you do a complete or grand scale cache and validation. But Vercel, Vercel does this in 300 milliseconds, which is in blink of an eye. So these are, these are some crazy fast numbers. You know, the latency is crazy low. You're developing super dynamic content now, and you're able to purge this very easily with a click, not exactly click of a button, but actually a, you know, a call of an API. Now, let me tell you why this is a game changer for developers as well as for Vercel. For developers, it seems obvious at first because this is something which will allow you to build highly, highly dynamic websites with highly cached versions. So you might have a dynamic route where you might have one page which is accessed a lot whereas the other page which is not accessed at all that much and you can keep those both of those pages basically you know completely statically generated without any revalidate parameters and only incrementally regenerate them as required the best case for this is for example blog posts you don't even need to generate those pages until requested right and when they are requested if they are, you know, before a certain date or if you have certain criteria like the post is just updated and so on, you can just on demand regenerate them and uh, just completely omit the revalidate parameter. I mean, I mean, this feels almost like a game changer to me, honestly, because anywhere you know that a particular change needs to be reflected on the main website, you hook this revalidation API call, this call to this endpoint in that particular microservice or in that particular webhook or something now, this seems very obvious at front for us as developers but this is a game changer move from Vercel also why because these numbers i'm not sure how many players in the industry can offer this number and this is the game this would have been a useless feature if Vercel took seven seconds 10 seconds 12 seconds even four seconds because if i'm putting a comment if i'm publishing it and refresh it and i don't see it it's bad. But if Vercel is able to really achieve this at scale at 300 milliseconds, you know, propagating their global CDNs so quickly, then this means that Vercel has cracked a formula where it can serve the content at static speed, which is highly dynamic, right? So highly dynamic content at a very static level performance, which, which is always faster always always faster than computing something at the edge so computing something at the edge is much slower uh, you know computing something at not edge is much slower than computing something at edge which is also much slower than just serving a static file directly from the edge and Vercel is a company which makes Next.js a framework and also has such power, such proprietary power, because this is not something you will get on AWS. This is not something you can get on Netlify. This is not something which is available right now at all, right? This is only something which Vercel has. So it's it's more like a vendor lock-in feature. This feature is not for Next.js. This feature is for Vercel because this feature is useless if you're not on Vercel, at least right now. So this is an awesome play by Vercel itself because this obviously unlocks a lot of you Use cases for enterprises as well and gives a lot more reason for people to choose Vercel as their hosting provider 
than AWS or Netlify or any other provider, which just provides hosting. I mean, I'm I'm so impressed by this feature alone itself, and especially this fact that they propagate all the changes within 300 milliseconds that I don't even think that anything else in this release comes closer. But one thing obviously, which I like again, is that their continued investment on SWC for making sure that builds are also much more faster and better. So last time I tried this SWC Minify experimental mode, it, it was actually bad. It used to crash a lot of plugins and internals. So I'm not sure how much they have improved. It's still in RC. It's in, it's in RC. So that means it has got really good over time. So I'll probably give it a try. But yeah, until last time for at least for code dams code base, it wasn't working very properly. So that's one thing. But again, like I said, it should speed up your builds a lot. And of course, Versal keeps on improving, keeps on delivering on Next.js, keeps on doing speed, performance, stuff, everything. I mean, Versal is one of my favorite companies. The only fact I hate about them is their pricing is ridiculous. For small startups, it's it's almost impossible for you to pay $55 per 100 gigabytes of bandwidth and $9 for 1000 images. I mean, as a developer, I would probably pay for Versal all day, all year if they make their prices a little bit sane for startups and of course until we raise hundreds of millions of <laughs> dollars or you know even tens of millions would do it would not be very feasible for us to actually jump to Versal enterprise which is you know something that charges you in four digits per month with an annual contract so it's almost like you know spending a few hundred thousand dollars per year close to hundred thousand dollars but yeah i mean this is like crazy stuff happening in today's time remix is coming out with tons of new features and a very different approach in architecture where they move the compute closer to the user to the edge now versal has come out with next years where they give you programmatic way of just you know isring something so incremental static regeneration is like a different approach of cache control which is what remix goes with which is like a web standard but yeah i mean this is this is crazy time to be in web development and especially just just making sure about what is happening in the versal and the front-end framework world at least for now but yeah i mean i mean i'm super impressed with versal as usual super awesome feature much in need much required the only complaint which is not exactly a complaint also because i understand the business that this this feature is basically useless until and unless you are actually using versal as the hosting provider but yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you like this if you did make sure you leave a like subscribe there's something interesting coming around next JS might be a course it might be a certification you don't know i'm gonna make an announcement soon so make sure you have your bell icons turned on that is all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching